Hello everyone and welcome back to the main channel. I'm trying a new um, angle because, well, I just am to be fair. So today we're doing a short video because one of these lights is going to die. And I don't know which one, but I know that one of these lights will die. And the other thing I do know is that there's not a lot to talk about on this subject. And I haven't got all the time in the world to actually film today's videos to be fair so we will be we will be cracking on and speed talking now today's topic of conversation is a topic that is nearly 10 years old now uh, let's see what other clues can I give to uh, make this feel more exciting uh, the review of death podcast did a a, a paywall exclusive um, commentating, doing a commentary on this. It's well known for not being the best thing in the world that's ever happened. It's best known for not everyone enjoying themselves. It's best known for that light's dead now. It's best known for being on BBC Three. That is Doctor Who in Live. Now, what we're talking about is, would Doctor Who Live work now? As in that premise of, get all the companions at the BFI, get some of the current cast of the BFI, get two hosts, do it live, have it live. Now, it would work, but some rules for some pointers are some things that we should point out. First of all, if you're going to do it, do not do a live link to America. At all, because he did that, it didn't work. Second of all, get hosts that are comfortable and know a lot about Doctor Who. So, get, for instance, um, oh, what she got? Well, if you need a radio presenter, if you want someone, Joe Wiley, that's her name, to get Joe Wiley. If you want, if you want a radio presenter, so they could go out on the radio at the same time. Um, and get get make sure the guests on there are happy and make sure that you talk to them all so fully pieces 60th anniversary they spoke to nearly as many of the presenters as possible they got they got the presenters involved they were all to it so for doctor live if you want to do that again so get all the companions get all the remaining doctors if you can't make it show vts and well, all the companions that are uh, remaining and all the companions that want to turn up anyway. You don't force anyone to, to do it. But what you do is then you set aside a program called Companion Corner where each part, each time you do Companion Corner within the hour, you talk to them all generally and you make sure they all get to say at least one word each. Like a, say something, so... But you do it by decade, so like one com uh, c companion corner could be about what would they like start working with William Hartnell and what would they like working with Patrick Droughton and yeah, yeah, yeah. And it goes bang, 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 that one, that one, that one, that one. But then I think what would make it even better is then if you do, if you get K9 involved and, and get K9 to do a fact reel. So what we mean by that is we get the, whilst they're sorting out their next thing, we cut to K9 telling a fact about a, a villain, right? A fact file, if you will. And then we do an honourable mention for all the um, cast we've lost. So you would do an honourable mention of the Companion, the Doctors and other excess cast, crew, everyone in the Doctor Who universe that we've lost. You do that in the middle of the program so you can set up a few games. So then you do a few challenge games where you involve everyone in it that's in the room who worked on the show saying uh, how many times have you defeated a side member. You do it so that you don't squish a companion because Rick Edwards did it. Right. They did it for the live show for the 50th but Rick Edwards was squishing Katie Manning and that didn't work. The concept worked but because of the way the show was going it wasn't really working so if we make it so that there's like an area fact happen so we don't do it the bfi either 
the next time you would do it because it's too small. So what you do is you hire out a studio, either a Doc 10 in Salford or at London or anywhere else, but you hire out a studio and make sure that it's properly set up so you have your uh, lounge, you have your area to do interviews and to show images on the screen if you need to, to just so you have your area for fans um, you have your area, and props are all scattered about, you have your area for the companions and you have your area for the doctors which are next to each other which, if you really want to mingle with them, so you have like each companion table will be, so you have like the third doctor's companions we on one table uh, and then you include Big Finish into it because on the live show last time they mentioned a lot of Big Finish so, you, so if you don't have the original doctor there you get a big finish encounter there so that they're on the table so each table will have a doctor of some sort on the table with them because it won't be like one circle table for each set but it'll be like a couple of big tables with them all on it um, and then you, you you talk to them table by table because they've got signposts of, of it and I feel like if it's an hour or two hours it would be more interesting because then you can Cut to, so let, let's say, let's say we want to do a shortened edition of Unleashed. So Stefan Powell would do a shortened version of Unleashed, and that would join in into the broadcast. Um, and it'll just be less uh, awkward as it was previously, because everyone wants to be there, and they make sure that the, the, the question they're asking are the right question, and make sure that the hosts, the host it, are A, good presenters, B, massive Doctor Who fans, and C, the audience watching at home know that the hosts are Doctor Who fans because they've mentioned it several times previous. So I'm not saying the Zoe Ball would be kept with one bad. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that we need, so, like, I'm trying to think now, so if Crystal D, but she's not a well-known enough presenter, to do it, so she would be a good choice, but she's not well known enough to do it. Let's say Chris Chris Johnson, he was serious, he, so he could do it, but I think people would assume it's a children's programme. So this would also stick on BBC Three again, to say that yes, BBC Three is back, and yes, here's what we want to do with BBC Three now. So you would, you would do it, but you would do this to celebrate, um, celebrate just Doctor Who itself so I would say if they were going to do it again and they probably won't but you would do it at the beginning of just before the series premiere oh well after episode one because it was Doctor Who Live the after party really but it was Doctor Who the after party so you would do it um what do you call it you would do it straight after series 14 episode one episode has aired and I would say you would do it instead of Unleashed. And what I mean by that is that you air it straight after on BBC Three. You have Unleashed, you have a snippet of like a 20 minute version of Unleashed in there. And then the, and then you say you can watch the full episode straight after this. So then after that's broadcast, then you do Unleashed because they're, they're talking about the episode. And then to make it even better, they should have a fan zone corner. So this fan zone corner, um, because of BBC are hiring them, not well, because we're all finding them and it's not Zoe Balls or other presenters' jobs to get them. We could get Doctor Who Who tubers like myself to be in this. So Doctor Who Who tubers, uh, Doctor Who podcasters, and then we have a smitter of general fans. We have fans that don't already make content online uh, about the show. So that that we have some expertise in the fan area uh, for Doctor Who, so that we're not just getting fans that are just wittering. And then the Australian link worked in Doctor Who: The After Party Live, um, so we get a international link. So we get an international Doctor Who YouTuber to present as they're talking to Australian fans, and then we probably bring in, or we probably talk about that Australia had their own spin-off talk after show called Whovians. So I, I feel like we've got a lot covered and I feel like it'll be overall 
a much smoother, less awkward, and but happier two hours. So, what do you think? Should Doctor Who The After Party Live come back? Now, you will have read the title of this video, which will probably pronounce, which probably said what the name of the program was correctly, because I don't think it was called Doctor Who The After Party. I think it was, it, no, those words were in it. I just can't remember which order they came under. So, there we have it. Sorry that light turned on and off. I have no idea why it did that. Um, so I need to go and investigate that and edit this, actually. So, what do you think? Should uh, Doctor Who The After Party Live become a more regular thing in the universe? Should it come back bigger and better? What would you do that I haven't mentioned to make that show even better? Thank you guys for watching. Time on Twilight. Bye! I'm gonna head off this way. Don't forget to subscribe to the official Tom Mason YouTube channel.